So I recently purchased an ANET A8 3D printer for about $265. And I'm printing a button guard or a button guide that goes on the buttons. And this is the final product. But to get to this where it's relatively a good clean print with minimal cleanup, with little stringing, um, I had to go through four iterations of this. This is the first iteration. And you can see it broke loose from the heat bed. And I don't know if you can see this. Maybe it'll focus or not. You can see it was really, really under extruded. Um, this didn't fill in very well. This is the bottom. And it popped off the bed. And I came back about 10, 15 minutes later. And there's a pile of uh, PLA plastic being built up. And this thing's scooting around the bed with the nozzle head. So... Uh, this is fail number one. This is the second try for the button guard. I increased the bed temperature from 50 degrees Celsius to 55 degrees Celsius. I increased the extruder flow from 100% to 102%. Um, I sanded this down on 600 grit sandpaper, so it's a little smoother right here. But you can see it still has a little bit of under extruding, a lot better than this one. It still had some uh, uh, empty spaces in here. You're not going to get it perfectly, but um, the main issue I had with this was the stringing. You can see where the nozzle would come in and do its circle here, and then come out and go to the next one, and every one of these were just dirty. And I tried sanding this down, but it, it just uh, kind of a lost cause because cleaning this up and getting it to fit is easier to, you know, it's easier to reprint it than to... Uh, try to clean this up. So this is fail number two. These two were printed at 0.1 millimeter per layer and that took about 46 minutes to print this. And I changed my layer to 0.2 millimeter and it cut it down to about 26 minutes but this broke when I was prying it off the uh, heat bed. That's how much uh, uh, bond that it had. But for this one, I increased the flow rate from 102% up to 105%. And you can see how much better it filled in. And I also printed a three round rim on this that helps to fix it to the heat bed not really necessary if you once you got your extruder set up correctly and it's kind of a pain to take off on these complex shapes so you got to get in here and stuff like that but again I had the problem with stringing I even uh, increased the retraction amount from about 4.5 to 5 millimeters and that didn't help and so I started doing research online and found that decreasing the amount of or the distance that your head moves before it retracts will fix the spidering uh, issues. So the retraction distance was set at 1.5 millimeters and I decreased that to 1 millimeter. And on this successful print, I increased the heat of the bed to 60 degrees Celsius which is right about the temperature of the glass transition temperature for PLA. I also decreased the uh, retraction distance traveled before it starts retracting to one millimeter. I increased my nozzle temperature to from 190 Celsius to about 193 and you can see there's minimal spidering And this can easily be cleaned up with a knife. One upgrade that you have to do if you get an ANET A8 are these bed adjusting knobs. If you've ever had to uh, take your screwdriver and uh, you know twist this and uh, you know screw it up and down, that's a huge pain. Now you just turn the knob. 
what you do is take your heat bed off and drill these holes out on the corner of your H bracket with a uh, 1 8 inch drill bit or a 3 millimeter drill bit. This is after you print these, of course. And these have the spring cups that I also printed with these uh, nuts that go over the wing nut. I couldn't get the uh, pause at height feature to work on this where it prints to like a certain height and then pauses for 60 seconds and you drop a nut into the print and then it prints over the nut. And I couldn't get that to work, so I just settled for these kind that go over your wing nuts. I heated this spring up, held it with a pair of pliers, heated the spring up with a uh, heat gun and pushed these cups onto the spring because it is kind of tight. Then you screw these on there and it makes adjusting so much easier. When you turn these, these screws will sometimes spin, so I just added in a drop of super glue on top of these so that uh, these heads don't spin anymore. The uh, standard, I think everybody who buys an A-Net A8 does this button, <laughs> and that's the second upgrade. The third upgrade I made for this was a filament extruder guide, which uh, keeps your filament in one place instead of uh, getting caught on something. Another mod that I did to my extruder head was add a, a an open extra washer into this right here because this was basically grinding the filament because it wasn't pushing up enough. So I took this nut off right here and added a washer on that, screwed this set screw all the way down because underneath here is the bolt right here that holds your entire uh, extruder to the frame. So you tighten this bolt up and you're able to tighten this set screw that the spring goes over all the way down then screw this nut all the way down. So I use this light oil used for hair clippers on my rails. This bolt that holds this entire thing on, this hex head bolt was loose. So I added in a uh, drop of super glue to the threads of this bolt and then tighten it down until it's snug and this can still operate and, and move up and down. But this little mod has completely fixed my filament uh, chewing issue that uh, this thing had. Just that one little millimeter of uh, extra washer in there adds enough tension to uh, make it work. Another mod that I tried but was unsuccessful was this uh, round nozzle that replaces the stock nozzle. The reason this nozzle didn't work for me um, is because I adjusted my nozzle all the way up to the feed gear that sits up against the uh, tooth gear. Um, just barely uh, like a one millimeter from that. So the nozzle is higher up. So I'm currently modifying the drawing of this nozzle in uh, Google SketchUp and I'll reprint it and take out maybe two or three millimeters in this right here so it sits up higher off of the bed. But right now, if I was to print with this, this thing would hit the print. But I modified my stock nozzle by grinding maybe about three to five millimeters off of it on my bench grinder and that keeps it up off the uh, uh, heat bed enough that it's not hitting my prints but I'm still able to blow air into it. One little secret I found, well it's not a secret, but using this glue stick, yeah, purple glue stick, Elmer's makes the same thing, the normal glue stick for school. Smear it on there, a terry cloth, this is a bottle of isopropyl alcohol and water. I fill the bottle up about 25% with isopropyl alcohol fill the rest up with just regular tap water and turn off the bed before you do this I guess so but what it does is spreads that glue out so that it is an even uh, 
layer of glue on here. I found this trick out by trying to clean the extra glue off of my bed because if you have too much glue or it's globbed up or something then your print's not going to stick very well but if it's a uniform layer it will stick like crazy I mean I've actually had to use a pair of pliers to break the uh, a print off of this thing so I just couldn't get these off but you have a nice uniform glue cover on your tape which will, once this dries, you can uh, start printing. You can preheat your bed and it'll dry even faster. But future uh, prints will be the spool holder because right now it's just rolling around on the, uh, on the bolt. This is one of the very first things I printed and it came out okay. You can see here it's a little bit under extruded. I tried sanding some of this down. This was uh, set at the filament flow of 100 and it's under extruded. It still worked, it still printed good, but you can see the uh, very distinct uh, lines in it. This one is printed at 107 and uh, it had really good adhesion.